Okay, welcome to the first example problem for Module 1. This will probably be the only example problem. As a note, I have to use my bad microphone for this today, unfortunately, so please be patient with the audio quality. Just turn it all the way up. Okay, so let me describe this problem to you. We have down here a rigid wall that is not moving. And then up here, we have a plate that extends infinitely in either direction to the left and right. And it is moving to the right with a velocity of v. In between this fixed plate and the moving plate is a fluid with a viscosity of mu. So these are the things we know. We also know the distance between the fixed plate and the moving plate is h. So what we want to find is first assuming steady state, so that means no changing with time. In other words, our fluid is not accelerating. It is um, going at a constant velocity. Um, and then assuming a linear velocity profile, um, we will get into what that means here in a second. First A, draw the velocity distribution, and B, find the shear stress at the wall. So I'm going to do this essentially for you. I want you to follow along and try to do it with me. The quiz, which we'll do Wednesday and Friday of this week, you will find draws a lot on this example problem. Okay, so first, let's perform our analysis for part A. We want a visual depiction of our velocity distribution. In other words, a plot. Okay, so we're going to draw an axis, and we're going to make the vertical axis Y, or the dimension between the fixed plate and the moving plate. And the horizontal axis will be U, or the velocity of the fluid. We're going to say here is a velocity of zero, and this represents a velocity of V. We'll say zero starts here for y, and then we go to h. So going back, we know that at the wall, the fluid, so right, this plate is moving this way, which means it is going to be dragging the fluid at the top with it. Likewise, the fluid at the bottom is stuck to the bottom plate. Remember the no-slip condition. The no-slip condition tells us that the fluid will assume the velocity of any solid it is touching at the solid. So the fluid at the wall is not moving, whereas the fluid touching this plate is going to be moving along with the plate. It's stuck to the plate. So this fluid is moving at a velocity of v. So you see not moving, moving at velocity of v. And now in between here, our fluid is going to have different velocities as the viscous drag between the layers causes the fluid to get faster and faster towards the final speed. Another thing that's important is we are assuming a linear velocity profile, which means that if we were to draw a line representing our velocities, it would be a straight line. So we don't have you know, some exponential profile or some parabolic profile. We have a linear profile. Okay, so like we said, at y of zero, we have our fixed plate, which means our fluid is not moving. It's stuck to that plate. It must have the velocity of that fixed plate, which is zero. Likewise, at h, which is where our moving plate is, our fluid will be going the speed of the moving plate. Again, because of the no-slip condition, it's stuck to that plate, which is moving. <clears throat> so that fluid is moving with a velocity of v. We also know we have a linear profile, which means there is a straight line of change in velocity between those two points. All right, so we can now draw what our velocity profile looks like. Okay, I wanted to, um, real quick, uh, something that's confusing is the way we've drawn this, right? So this right here, since this is y, then this would be our plate down here. And this would be our moving plate up here, which is moving with velocity v in that direction. 
So you can see, we now see what the fluid is looking like. So if we were to put some sort of uh, a bubble, say, or a small piece of sand here, and then time it, we'll see it, that it's moving at the velocity indicated by this line right here. So it will be moving at some medium velocity. In fact, if it's a line and halfway between 0 and h, it will be moving at v divided by 2. Likewise, a piece of sand here will be moving slower than the piece of sand here. The piece of sand in the fluid here will be moving faster. So you can imagine kind of what this fluid looks like. You could almost visualize it flowing uh, as this top plate moves and this bottom plate is stationary. Now, part B asks us to find the shear stress at the wall. Um, in order to do that, we're going to use Newton's law. But to use Newton's law, we need to find a derivative. And I wanted to redraw this plot a little bit different. Instead of y is the vertical and u is the horizontal, I'm going to do u as the vertical axis and y as the horizontal axis. So now this will go from 0 to h, the height of our fluid. This will go from 0 to v, the velocity of our moving plate. It is, again, a linear velocity profile, so it's actually going to look exactly the same. Um, but you see that we've switched our axes. <coughs> and the reason I did this is because, we'll write this in red, the slope of this line, the one that I've depicted here, is du dy. And you'll notice that is the term in Newton's law. Whereas the slope of this line, which is the way we usually draw velocity profiles with the dimension in the, in the vertical axis and the speed on the horizontal axis. So the actual slope of this line would be dy du right? Rise over run, or vertical over horizontal. And this is the inverse, whoops, the inverse of what we find in Newton's law. So I just wanted to make clear that when we draw these velocity profiles, it's a little confusing because the derivative that we need to find for Newton's law is actually a derivative for this plot. Okay. So let's go ahead and move to part B, which is to find the shear stress at the wall. OK, we're going to start by writing Newton's law. And why are we even writing Newton's law? What does that do for us? Well, Newton's law gives us a relationship between shear stress and velocity profile. Here is shear stress, and here is u, the velocity profile. So if we know one, we can find the other one as long as the viscosity is known. And so you see viscosity is really just a scaling factor telling us how much of a change in velocity in the y direction is needed to give a certain shear stress. So to do to find the shear stress, we're going to have to find du dy, which means we must first find our x velocity u as a function of y. Okay, let's do that. So first, remember we have a linear velocity profile. Here is the equation of a line, right? So going back, right? Here is our oh dear. Here's our velocity profile, and it is a line. So we're going to try to predict u as a function of y, and then take that derivative. So here's the function, our normal function of the line we learned in like fifth grade. I'm going to rewrite that using this plot. So y is, indicates the vertical axis, which in our case is u. So u equals the slope times 
x, which means the horizontal axis, which is actually our vertical dimension y. y plus our, y inter our vertical intercept b. So this is the equation of a line. However, we don't know what m and b are. We're going to have to find those. So let's find m plus b. It will do that by using known values. All right, let's go back to our plots. <clears throat> right, so here is our line we're trying to solve the equation for. We ask ourselves, is there anywhere where we actually know um, the value of that line? And we say yes, right? At the bottom and at the top, we know the velocity. We know that here at the wall, the, the velocity is zero. And here at the moving plate, the velocity v is v. And these would be the x velocities, or u, that we're talking about when I say velocity. So let's go back and write those down. Number one, we know that at y equals zero, the velocity is equal to zero, right? Our fluid is stuck to the non-moving plate. So let's plug that into our equation, u equals my plus b. So u is zero, and that's equal to m times zero plus b. This breaks down to zero equals zero plus b, which means that b must be zero. All right, so we solved the intercept b. <clears throat> Let's solve then what our slope is by applying the other boundary condition. That's what we call these known values, our boundary conditions. All right, so now at y equals h, or at the moving plate, we know that the velocity is v, again, because of the no-slip condition. So let's plug that into our equation. So u, which is v, is equal to m, which we're trying to solve for, times y, which is h. y is h, u is v, plus b, but b is 0, so we're just going to leave that off. Now we can solve for m. m is just equal to v divided by h. So now we can bring this back down and say u equals m v divided by h times y plus b, which is 0. So this right here is our velocity distribution. Right, this tells us our x velocity, remember u is the x component of velocity, and it gives us that x component of velocity as a function of y. So you pick a y value, I can tell you how fast the fluid is moving in the x direction at that y value using this equation. Okay, so now that we know our u velocity, oh, we're in red all of a sudden, which is u equals v over h times y, we can find du dy for use with Newton's law. So we must take the derivative of our function u as a function of y. So remember, we just um, reduce the exponent of y by 1, which means y is raised to the 0, giving 1, and we are just left with v over h. Let's plug that into Newton's law. The shear stress equals viscosity times du dy, which tells us the shear stress is equal to viscosity times the velocity divided by h. And you say, well, we're supposed to find it at the wall. How do we find it at the wall? Well, this is interesting. You see there is no y in the final equation. This means we can't plug in. Normally what we would do is plug in y equals 0 into our shear stress equation and then find what the shear stress is at y equals 0. But because this is a constant, this tells us that the shear stress is constant. 
throughout the fluid. And we actually could have figured that out right when we were plotting this, right? Remember, Newton's law tells us that the shear stress is proportional to the slope of the line at the point we want to find the shear stress. Well, because we have a line, we have a constant slope, which means du dy is a constant. So when we plug that into Newton's law, we find that the shear stress is going to be a constant. If on the other hand, we had a different profile, say we had an exponential, I mean a, a parabolic profile, then you see that the slope of this line is changing as a function of y. And so our shear stress will also change as a function of y. Okay, so that is our example problem. And I would study this to get ready for the quiz. Thanks.